Well, I've just powered the machine up. Obviously, don't power it up without the case on if you've got the machine at home. Anyway, check the brew pressure. Bit of a surprise for me because uh, obviously it's heating, so you get the expansion of water a little bit, but it's set spot on 9 bar, which is uh, very, very good. Nice to see them come from the factory set correctly like that. So at the moment what it'll be doing is heating up the um, hot water boiler. One of the things I always do when I'm testing machine, I obviously always heat them up and right up to operating temperature uh, with the case off because you never know if you're going to actually run into a leak or a problem or something like that. And with the case off it's um, easy to tell. Of course Bella Barista run them with the case off when they PDI them or check them before they go out. So you shouldn't have any leaks or any problems unless something developed in transit. But uh, I always like to watch a f machine I've never seen before um, just heat up for the first time and check everything's okay. And this one's looking good. It's actually a very nice little machine, very impressed. The water tank does actually hold two and a half litres. It's got some nice depressions either side um, for lifting it out. Uh, it's very well, very well thought out machine. Very well thought out indeed, and I'll find out once it's hot whether these are no compression or compression valves. As I say, I, I don't mind either. Now here's the vacuum breaker spitting and closing, yeah, and it'll spit and then close and drip a little water which evaporates away. Uh, sometimes they put tubes on these and just uh, and root them back into a Y piece again to stop it spitting around the boiler. Um, I, I guess you know. You can't have everything on a machine built um, to a price. You just keep expanding the price, but it closes fairly quickly. Well, uh, another surprise because the steam wand is closed. That, that, that valve is closed. You can close it tight or loose, but, but it's closed. And if I open it, can you see it's, it's just loose. It just flops around. There's no steam coming out. Uh, if I open it further, I feel resistance. And this is because I'm starting to let pressure off the spring. As I open it further, I get steam. Now, as I close it there, the steam stops completely. But look, I could still close it almost another half turn or turn. Look, steam, and then I could close it a whole turn, or well, whatever that is, half a turn, oh, three quarters of a turn. So it is a no compression valve. That's good because they're more expensive. Um, it means it doesn't matter if you do tighten it up, you're not compressing a seat. These work on a spring, like, like a car tyre valve. And as you open this, you release the pressure on the spring, the same as pushing in a car tyre valve, and that allows the steam out. So uh, that's a nice feature, normally seen on high-end machines. No burn steam wand, it's not getting hot. I think that's great. Good steam pressure, that I like to see as well. Um, the water one will be the same, no burn wand and is it a smooth flow and how we look yep that's a nice smooth flow water so that's very nice indeed not spluttery now one of the things I guess I was a little concerned about was the steam pressure and what I expect if the boiler's stable um, and you're not getting big swings in temperature like 10 degrees which can happen with cheap electronic thermostats I'd expect this to drop away quite a lot before the heater kicks in again. Uh, and each division between one and two bar is point, uh, point 0.2 of a bar. So it's gone from 1.2 down to 1. Now, with a pressure stat, it'd kick in now, and the heater, yeah, indeed, has kicked in. So that's actually nice. They've got a good thermostat. It's well set up. It's not a machine you're going to see in large amounts, but it will do 400 mil. It will, no problem, get you a nice texture. Um, it looks like a twin hole steam one. I'll just verify that. And it is, and it looks like it'll take standard steam tips. So, wouldn't be any problem getting other tips if you fancied a different, a single hole or a knife, spro knife or something like that. So, yeah, steam pressure. Seems good. Seems dry. Um, it does seem able to catch up a bit when the heater kicks in, which is good, and there's not too much lag. So yeah, very nice. Um, 
I mean, these, these HXs are pretty simple machines, not much to say. Rodney did say there's another model, costs a fair bit more. Uh, slightly better finishing in terms of being chrome all round, although I like the satin look. And, and when I get the case back on, I'll take a few photos of that. And apparently the drip tray is better finished without these marks, without these fold marks. But I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't really see a problem with, with having these little lines. I think this looks really, really good. Really, um, but a must Nice machine. Nice quality. I did review an Exbabar lever once, and, uh, yeah, I think this machine's, um, way better than an Exbabar lever, uh, which is uh, an HX similar sort of price range. And very, very small. Very, very nice machine. Um, these, I suppose... I consider these a little bit ugly. Um, could they be changed? I don't know. They're quite functional. But apart from that, no, marvellous little machine. A few other things I like. I know, I know these might seem little things, but the Porter filter actually fits in nicely. Um, locks round properly. You don't need excessive force. So they've got the gasket size right. The lugs, are, the ears of the Porter filter are the right size. These can fold in. The water one can't easily fold in, so, but they don't tend to leak if you're worried about that. You can keep a jug under it, I don't suppose it'll leak. What I really like is the gauge is great quality. Look at this button. Dual pole, dual pole push button. Nice metal button. Good. I mean, that again looks really nice. And even behind, behind this, a nice quality uh, push for the cam to operate the pump. Just very nice. And we'll see what she's like um, now that we've got the case on. Yeah, that's not too bad. Not, it is not the quietest vibe pump machine, but it's also not very noisy. So, yeah, very, very good. The height in the group is... I'm going to say it's okay. I can get a mug under it. Not easily, but I can get a mug under it. So that's not too bad. I wouldn't be able to get a very tall mug under it, but then I'd be pulling into shop glasses anyway. Um, I'll get a few of those. Now the shot glasses fit nicely. Um, you can't level the machine because you've got these little rubber grippy feet. If it were me, I'd probably stick some felt glide pads on them so I could slide the machine around easy. Um, but not height adjustable. But hopefully you're not gonna start needing wedge things under it to get an equal pour. It all looks fairly well set up. So, yeah. Very pleased, um, very pleased so far. Now, I realise this sounds irritating, but here's a rather nice feature of the Lilit. I drew water, I switched the machine off, drew water out of it, a lot of water, and then I emptied the tank, switched the machine back on, because I wanted to see if the pump would just run trying to water fill the water tank and destroy itself and it didn't and why i checked that is because if if the lever is lifted the pump runs so if you're pulling a shot and the low water alarm starts up the pump will run i'll just turn it off the pump would actually run um so you could complete your shot which is great it doesn't just suddenly say low water and cut the pump off however i was worried if the, the service boiler was calling for water because you'd emptied it out, say you'd turned it off and drawn some water like, like that with the machine off and you'd left it on a timer, if that tank needed to fill and this one was empty, I was worried the pump would run till it destroys itself. And uh, it doesn't. So that's quite good. They've actually thought that through as well.